Gilbert is telling everybody the truth. He said, you spoke against the LGBT community. You spoke against the Wayne Wayne son. Nobody likes you. I can say and do what I want against you. He's on video saying this. Yeah, because he knows once you did that, that's when they start talking about you. When you talked about Dwayne Wade's son and when you talked about Nas X, those were the only two times you was on my own those networks like that. Since the time you first made your, uh, when went viral. When you had those two statements, Ever since then, they have been messing with your algorithm ever since. Anytime you do something, they're messing with your algorithm. There's a there's a podcast that I went on, strong podcast. I won't say their name because I want to bring them in. They told me, man, we don't touch that with a 90-foot pole. I said, bro, all I said was about a situation with Kobe because I know that this man was a man's man. Them niggas wasn't ready for the mama mentality. Like you said, Carcino, I heard you say this in the video. You could have taken the way Kobe applied things and the way he approached it. He was all in. You mm -hmm. can take it and apply it to anything and yeah. make kids and make women successful. It wasn't just about boys. It wasn't just about females. The way he thought, the way he persevered could have helped everyone. Yeah. And so... The, the type of players that I'm telling you, I've heard them on the back of the bus talking about certain players that you see what they're doing now. And when you heard the way Kobe talked about them, man, don't even mention Gilbert Arenas in the same stratosphere. Kobe would never respect a guy like that. No. First of all, a fun fact about Kobe, he don't really respect you until he's about to fight you. Yeah. So if you've never been down there in a fight with Kobe, then he don't respect you. That happened with him and Gordon Hayward. <clears throat> you said who and Gordon Hayward? Uh, Kobe and Gordon Hayward. Kobe oh. gave him after that game. I'm sure you probably remember how he was guarding him, even though Kobe was giving him buckets, obviously, but he just appreciated it. He kept trying. Yeah. The strangest shit in the world. So, you know, I've never seen a nigga like that, <laughs> or a brother like that. Yeah, he but, wanna fight you, and then when you stand up to him, he like you because he know if you can't take it from him, the other guys is ten times as worse. If they if they gonna see it in you, like he see it in you, he feel they gonna see it in you, and you gonna fold on the court. If you fold in here in practice, you gonna fold in the game when when we need you down the stretch. I need people that can be stand up to them because if you can't stand up to me, hey, I already know you gonna fold to them. You can't stand up. You're going to fold when KG get out there and start talking. Because KG when he ran through try to take your soul from the jump ball. <laughs> when KG he ran through Paul Gasol's chest, oh, my goodness. I was like, Kobe ain't playing. Listen, bro, Kobe hated Paul Gasol. This is what people don't understand. This is breaking news. But he loves him, though. He did no, love him, though. No, he doesn't. He loved the fact that he won a championship. This is breaking news, what I'm about to say. Turn him out. You're playing. No, this is breaking news, what I'm about to say. Okay. Kobe Bryant came to the Charlotte Bobcats when I was with Charlotte, and they had gone through a losing stretch. Matter of fact, I think we beat them that game, and we was out at a nightclub. Kobe Bryant said, you need to I make sure – matter of fact, he said, make sure you fuck guys all up, get him ready, because he's soft as fuck. He's not ready to win. And he knew I'm going to rough him up. He knew I knew the old school rules of the game. I was taught as a big, even if you don't get the ball, run down and elbow a big, put him in his chest, turn and seal, 2-9, duck in. All of those things will make a big have to play defense and take you serious on the other end. All of that gets a big tired. This is the things that other bigs don't do. And Kobe Bryant, they was, they was on a losing streak. And Kobe Bryant say, make sure you fuck up in the game tomorrow. I got to get this bitch ready to win a championship. Yeah, because he know Powell plays very soft. If you watch when they played Spain and the Redeem team, this was his teammate. And they just went to the finals and lost to Boston. And everybody blamed Powell Gasol because he was too soft. On the Redeem team, Kobe played in the Olympics that year. Came back. When they played Spain, they, Kobe set the tone. He said, 
set a screen for me, and he ran through Pau Gasol on a hard screen, knocked him to the floor, knocked the win out of him. On the first play of the game, took the foul. Said, that was, his best, that was his best friend, so the media say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was. Kobe was a different type of cat, bro. Yeah, he he wanted to let him know, ain't no friends. We against each other. You the enemy right now. He was playing for Spain. He was like, man, Kobe just ran through you. (laughs) On the first play of the game, he went through Powell. Just because he want him to get it. And they didn't win until they had Bynum. That's when people don't give Bynum credit for that, that, that second run they had when they won the championship against uh, Boston, they had Bynum in there to help out Powell because Powell is not physical like that. He reminds me a lot of uh, Anthony Davis a little bit. Hey, hey, it's, you know, I'm about to break news again. Bop, 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 bop. Since everybody <laughs> want to talk and say Kwame don't talk. Everybody in the locker room saw this. This is where me and Kobe Bryant became friends. Kobe yeah. Bryant had a problem with me about something that I said that I won't rehash. Right. But I said something on the court. Kobe Bryant comes into the locker room while I'm injured and I got my foot in an ice bucket. And Gary Vitti and all of these training, Chip Schaefer, yeah. and all of them know that Kobe Bryant had punched Samaki Walker in the face on, on the plane one time. But all of these people had done got a work up on me and they know if Kobe punched me, it's going to be on. So for all of a sudden, I see Kobe's security staff. I see Gary V. I I see all these people. And then Kobe came in. He got loud while my foot was in the ice bucket. And he's saying all this shit to me and this is that. And I'm listening, but he got in striking distance. And then I hit that switch. I say, mother, not Samaki Walker. If you put your hands on me, ain't nobody in this motherfucking arena can stop me from breaking your Oh, my God. All of them were there to see it. Lamar Odom, all of them were there to see it. And I just said this over the internet and won't nobody say I'm wrong. Oh, my God. That Paul Gasol situation is pretty crazy because they always show him. uh, I think he was just uh, with his girls with uh, Vanessa at the house. So That that Paul Gasol situation is the fakest shit I ever seen. Are you that's serious? Why they, that's why they don't like me to talk because I know real <laughs> shit. They sell man, y'all Latina crazy. shit going over there, man. Every time I try to speak, it always be somebody trying to quiet me down. If y'all notice that, it always be <laughs> somebody trying to invalidate my story. But I tell you what, Lamar Odom, Chip Schaefer, Gary Vitti, uh, uh, Phil Jackson, all these people in the locker room with my foot in the ice bucket. So why do they put that on ESPN like that? It was recent too. What- I know you've seen it, Cino. Seen what? Uh, he was just hanging out with the girls. I can't remember the little girl's name. He was just with the, uh, the yeah, two girls. Yeah, I got traded after that. But I knew I was going to get traded after that. The f- you mean? Hell yeah, I got traded right after that. <laughs> <laughs> the moment I stepped in the game, I got traded the very next morning game to the Memphis Grizzlies. Y'all acting like I, they, they just trade the Paul Gas all happened. That trade with Paul Gasol having one because I got hurt, two because he said something crazy to me, and three I said, "Nigga, I'm not the mother nigga. You not gonna put your hands on me, nigga. I'm big Chris Childs, nigga. Fuck is he talking about?" <laughs> so everybody was in that locker room, run that story. Ronnie Terry off. All the people was there. Since Kwame Brown don't ever say nothing, run that story and see what you get back with that. <laughs> Bam, nigga, to your chin, nigga. Don't do that, nigga. We teammates, nigga. <laughs> Fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Man, I always stood on respect, bro. And I've never heard that story. Ask Lamar Odom. I got so many stories, bro. I'm telling you, I could not talk about these niggas. I could shut the internet down.